Live from the hottest holla table hall deep within the Outer Rim, it's Rogue Actions with your host, Urza, and tonight's special guest, Ramon Azad. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to Rogue Actions, where we are serving up the tough questions around these holla tables and the galaxy. And tonight we're joined by the Grand Master of the Alliance and a founding game changer, yes, Re- R- Ramon Azab. You guys know him as Remon. Remon, welcome to Urza's Holla Table. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic, Urza. And, you know, I, uh, I'm excited for, you know, this uh, Q&A seg- segment, and I, 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 I can't wait to see what you have to ask me. All right. Glad to be here. Well, well great, man. Let's, let's just get right to it. Now is the time. Are you ready to exercise your mastery of the holla tables? I, I, I am. And, uh, you know, you're, you're getting me excited just thinking about it. All right. As a reminder, please do not access your device or .gg. My droids are maintaining a scan of your signature, and any irregularities will be reported. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. let's begin. <laughs> Question. Well, let's, let's, let's do it. All right. Question one. Please put the following metas in the correct chronological order. Speed AOE, Nightmare, Poe with Droids, Wigs meta, and the Zal meta. They got to be in chronological order. Okay, so it was Speed with AOE. Speed AOE, Nightmare, Poe with Droids, Wigs meta, Zal meta. Okay, so I'd have to say that the first meta was... The Poe with droid. This, uh, no, no. No, you got no, I'm it. Poe po with droids. I, I, I'm, th- I'm thinking Poe, yeah, because I'm thinking of the original Poe meta but back in the day. Yeah, so Poe with droids would be the first meta. Then the uh, then got, the AOE you, meta. You got AOE, and then you got Wigs, and you got Zal, and Nightmare. Then, then I'd say Wigs, then Zal, then Nightmare in that particular order. Exactly. Well, well, I hate to correct you, but I think Wigs became before Speed AOE with that was like Lando and JKA. And didn't that happen first? Maybe. You know what it is? I'm just thinking because I ran a, uh, I kind of ran a Wigs team in tandem with the AOE meta. Like for a long time, my my arena team, I had no tanks. It was just Wigs with Palpatine, Lando, and Anakin. And I, I used to wipe you know, wipe the floor yeah. with that team. I mean, it was, it was, it was like uh, a 30 second nuts. match. Like it, it was bad, you yeah. know, but, uh, but that was, uh, that was my experience with the AOE meta. So, I mean, I'm just kind of tying in AOE with, with wigs too, but okay. Yeah. It was uh, right but, around the same time they were right there. So, but, they, but you're right. I mean, uh, you know, wigs, uh, wigs was like right before that. And then AOE kind of came, uh, you know, after that, uh, you know, so I, so I mean, I guess, yeah, that you'd have to flip flop that. So yeah. uh, listen, I'm not perfect. Okay. I have a, <laughs> I have a, you know, an old man's memory at this point. I've been playing this game for a long time. So I'm just trying to think and put things in chronological order here. And I was thinking, yeah, you know, I remember back in the day when the Poe you know, before speed actually mattered, you know, when there right. was no speed, uh, mods, po- yeah. it was, uh, it was just Poe who, wh- whose Poe went first. It was like a roll of the dice. And then they did the only nerf of speed that they've ever done in life. Which was a nerf post speed by one, and that made um, actually that made him not fast enough to go first. So it was actually yeah, at yeah. that time Yoda who was the fastest character in the game. Yeah, I totally, I totally forgot they they reduced his speed. That was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a it was a stealth nerf. They didn't even mention it in the in the in the uh, forums or or on the, uh, the the patch notes. It was just like you know, you if you just looked at it the next day, he he was one speed slower. All right, was, all right. Next yeah. question here. We're moving on to the important stuff. Bodie Rook. <laughs> Are oh, <no>. you ready? <laughs> his Zeta, double duty. At the end of each of his turn, Bodie grants this buff for two turns to a random ally who doesn't have it. What is the buff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know you know how well I know this answer. It's it's actually it's offense up. Wow. How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know that because uh, not too long ago, I had to Zeta my Bodhi Rook as uh, part of a uh, charity stream. So Reality Skew Gamers had a charity stream oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, suicide for suicide prevention. prevention. Yeah. And uh, I had thrown in the hat that if they had attained a certain threshold or a certain goal for donations, uh, that I'd be willing to Zeta you know, whoever they suggested 
And the worst suggestion that came along was Bodie Rook. And that happened to be what I had to do. So I made a video about that actually a few weeks back. Oh, I'll have to go check that out. I, I totally didn't know that. But, I'm I, man, that was right up here. <laughs> I was like, that's the most obscure Zeta. Like, he'll never know this. <laughs> I totally, uh, you know, for a specific reason, I actually know that exact. I had to know it. Uh, it, it was burned into my soul after I put the Zeta on. Yeah. Very cool, man. Very cool. All right. Next one here. This character, this next question, this character was the first prize in the first ever inaugural Swiggo tournament. Whoa. You know that I, I think you know this one. Yeah, I do know it because I won the character and it was uh it was Short Trooper. You got him, man. That, yep. he, and he was he was something special back then. Yes, yes, he was. Uh you know, the first uh, pre-taunt in the game and uh, he kind of changed the meta and arena for sure immediately. And I uh, I actually have a funny story about that. I mean, I was going back and forth with this guy overnight, uh, you know, just staying up all night long. I mean, you know, those tournaments, you have to yeah. sit up all night oh, long to oh, watch yeah. for the cheaters because they would they would just uh, put in the lower ranking characters and try to like Swap, uh, slowly yeah. climb up without using, uh, you know, that much energy. And that first tournament was actually with crystals. Yeah, I remember. So, uh, so I had to spend like $400 and I got, you know, it came down to the last like 30 seconds, man. And it was like between me and these two other guys. And I, I, I just fell short and I got, um, I got third place in that first tournament, it which got a me six a star. six star, six star, yeah. um, a six star, uh, short trooper. And then I was able to, in the next tournament, I was able to get, uh, uh, I believe second place in the next tournament, which got me the seven star. Yeah, I, I I do miss tournaments. I thought they were they were fun. They were totally a time sink, and you had to be like on top of it, you know, kind of moving at the very end of the day there. But it was fun. I I did have fun with them. I miss tournaments so much. I mean, I I racked it up in tournaments. I got a seven star short trooper, a seven star Jin, a seven star Cassian, uh, all out of the tournaments. Yeah. I got uh, basically yeah. four characters out of the tournaments. So I, I did. Pretty- get- I did at the very end get bit by the whole cheating thing with uh, a bunch of guys that were doing the whole just like it hacked hacked APK or whatever, and like I I finished twenty six on the tie advance tournament, and that just that that, that 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 was the end of it for me. I, I knew that the tie advance tournament was going to be heavily played because everybody wants that tie advance. It was you know ships had just come out, yeah. so it was like a big deal, and everybody was looking forward to that that tie advance ship. So I decided to go all in on the Cassian tournament. And I uh, I finished uh, in second place in that tournament, and, I, and there was also a pack that coincided with that tournament where you were able to get like eighty Cassian yeah, shards or yeah. something like that. So that got me to seven stars uh, with him, uh, you know, then as well. So I had a seven star Cassian and a seven star Jin Urso uh, from the tournaments also, which was cool. I mean, I had a you know a Rogue One team before anybody else, <laughs> uh, but uh, unfortunately they were horrible. So <laughs> yeah. you know, I also I also had Android, so I got. K two SO before everybody else for oh, free. Yeah. yeah. You know, so so I had I had like a full Rogue One team and I was like, oh man, I can't wait to roll this team out. And man, was I so disappointed. <laughs> I, I think it's a I think it's a fun team to play on offense, but they just uh yeah, they were not able to hang in the med at the time. Well they they could hang, but I don't know. They, they have never been meta. They, they they are they are um they are they I like Jin's Zeta uh leadership and I think that they are um Definitely uh, like an interesting team. Uh, I just think that uh, they, they've never been able to carry along with any meta, and, and that's yeah. prior to the Nightmare team and prior to uh, you know all these um, you know even prior to the CLS teams. I mean, there was there was never a time where they could take out the meta. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's head on to the next question here. In the history of this game, there have been two Zetas that have been refunded. Can you name those two characters? And the reasons why those Zetas were refunded. Okay, so they refunded Barris' Zeta, yeah, because and- they they changed uh, the way her Zeta worked, and it was that uh, after she died, her Zeta was no longer um, her yeah. Zeta was no longer uh, viable. So, like after yeah. she died, like it yeah. would actually disappear. So because they changed the way her Zeta worked, they refunded everybody the Zeta, so they could uh, reapply it if they wanted to. Yeah, and then there was a uh, return of Zetas for. <coughs> I know they were talking about doing it for D- old Daka. 
Yeah, I but, th did, did they actually do it? I thought they did it. I don't have Night Sisters, so I know they talked about it. I didn't. I didn't Zeta Old Daka, but I know that there was discussion about that. So if that is the one you're thinking of, then yes, that, Old Daka would be the, the one, one, and that'd be because of the Sith raid and yep. how they uh, they had nerfed the Night Sister team and that. Um, uh, uh, what was it called? What was the name of that team? The um, oh, Cridalite, Cridalite, Cridalite team. Yeah. yeah. So that was the reason for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that was where I was going with that. So good job. All right, on to the next one here. Of all the Imperial Troopers, two of the Troopers have a space in their name that separates their function from their Trooper suffix. Can you name those two? Oh, man. Yeah, this is this is some next-level stuff here, man. So they have a, a separation in their name? Every other, every other Trooper has the name like they're all one word? It's all one word, but two of them have the separation. Death Trooper yep, is one of them. He, he's one of them. And range trooper, you got it, man. You got it. These oh, new troopers, wow. man, for whatever reason. <laughs> I, I I knew about Death Trooper because I've typed in a search for Death Trooper. Uh, he was one of my favorite characters. Like uh, he was, he was a character that I was really looking forward to out of Rogue One. I mean, when when Death Trooper was coming, you know, as a game changer, I had known you know pretty well in advance that Death Trooper was going to be in the game uh, in the next uh, few months and. Because uh, at that point we actually got information a lot more in advance than we do now, right. uh, but but um, but I, I I didn't know when he was coming or like in what fashion he was coming if he was going to be like a marquee character or whatnot, and when I found out that he was coming in that Citadel pack, I mean I mean I have a hate video. Oh, I I, I, I remember watching I mean, this video. Just, you were, just, you were... It just says Citadel pack. Why? Yeah, I remember watching. <laughs> you know this what video. I mean? And I uh, that if you look it. back, back in the Team Skunk days, I made a video about that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I was, I was really like so stoked about Death Trooper coming to the game. I thought he was like such a cool character, and uh, you know, I, I definitely remember like searching his name multiple times. So I know that <laughs> it has a separation. Yeah, there you go, man. Nice, nice work there. All right, on to the next one here. Can you name one Jedi that is of the Zabrak race? Oh wow. This is a little, uh, maybe a little outside of Galaxy of Heroes, but you, 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 he, this character is in Galaxy of Heroes. That is the, the hint I will give you. The Zabrak race. So that's like Darth Maul, Savage. Okay, oh, okay, you're talking about Eeth Koth. You got it, man. <laughs> I mean, Master <laughs> yeah. Eeth Koth, please. Let's give him his title. <laughs> uh, master, Grandmaster, yeah, Master <laughs> Eeth Koth. He wasn't Grandmaster, but Grand, yeah. Master Eeth Koth and... Uh, I used to actually run Eath Koth in Arena way back in the day. He was the oh, no. only formidable stun for like a long time. He had like a 70% chance to stun, and it was great against droids. So if you were facing against an IG-86 or so, I mean, this is like before protection and yeah, all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, he, he was like a great option to like stun, yeah. you know, that, 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 that target and then also stick ability block on droids. Yeah, I used to run a, uh, a Jawa up against droid teams. Jawa with that, he had that AOV stun. On droids, yeah. it was sick. It was great. He he was one of the characters that they thought like with Ognaught was going to be like a huge star oh, of the yeah. uh, AAT raid when it I came out. Um, you know, but those anti droid characters didn't end up working out too well. <laughs> oh, no. it ended up being uh, you know, a whole different bunch of teams. You yeah. know, until Wa until Wampinator finally came out. And because of that, I have a uh, G nine Ognaught because I was trying right. to prepare for that. Right. I mean, to me too. We we all like you know that that was the that was the scouting report. Like, level up your Ugnot. Yeah. yeah. I think he got two of my droid colors actually, and I regret that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> On to the next one here. Who is the only character in the Galactic Republic faction that does not have an accompanying accompanying Jedi or clone tag? Okay. Um from the Galactic Republic that doesn't have a Jedi or clone tag. He's the only um, one. I, I think, would, would, it, would it be Lobot? No, man, he was not part of the Galactic Republic. It is. I, I, thought, I thought this was like a trick question because yeah, you're, no, you're, no. you're thinking of Lobot. I, you know, I, know. I, just, I Look, thought I, this is, I thought you were trying to, <laughs> trying to, throw, trying to, trying to trick me there. But. <laughs> it, okay. is the, it is the Coruscant Underworld Policeman. He is, uh, he's holding it down in the Galactic Republic. He's the, is he, okay, he's in the Galactic Republic. So you said there's two people or one? Oh, just one, just one. Okay. Just, he's okay. the only one Person. that doesn't. Have, he's not a clone or a Jedi. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. All right, this next one is a total throwaway, but uh, we'll, we'll just put you in a little hot water here. True or false? 
The Last Jedi was better than all the prequels. Absolutely, absolutely false. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I, uh, I, uh, I mean, I have a review out about The Last Jedi, and uh, I mean, I go into a pretty in-depth rant on that movie. I could sit here for hours and talk about <laughs> all the problems with that movie. Um, you know, I mean, love it or hate it, uh, you know, it's now canon and it is what it is. Uh, we have to, we have to live with just it. move on, just have to move on. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, really if I just could sum it up in one word or I mean like one, well, not one word, but in one, like, uh, yeah, one word I'd say just disappointed. You know yeah. I mean? I, I, I'm not mad about it. I, I know that, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. And a director has the ability to make his decisions on, uh, what a movie is going to be, but. Uh, I, I definitely was super anticipating a uh, a force heavy like like uh, 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 Jedi versus Sith or Jedi versus whatever you know the Knights of Ren or Snoke yeah, is yeah. Uh, centric kind of movie, and uh, especially since they're going to be ending the saga uh, after this next movie, I figured that we'd get a lot more deeper into the mythology behind you know the Chosen One and you know, who Ray is and, you know, I mean, I, I mean, it seemed like, uh, he almost didn't like, he, he, like he almost purposely went out of his way to just make it so that we, you know, all the things that we wanted or all the things that we yeah. cared about going into yeah. the movie just aren't important anymore. And, yeah. um, you know, for that reason, I have zero expectations going into the final movie. I mean, going into this movie, there was all this like wonder. And I, you know, I was like wondering like, okay, you know, who are, who the, who are the Knights of Ren? Who's Supreme Leader Snoke? Who are Ray's parents? Uh, you know, are we going to find out more about the original Jedi texts and like where the Jedi came from? Like, are the Jedi, you know, really supposed to be gray and not all good? You know, they're supposed to be kind of in the middle. Uh, they're not really supposed to be the police of the world. Kind of like they're supposed to be like, you know, in the middle and balanced and 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 make decisions based upon keeping that balance. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, we'll have to see. He, you know, J.J. Abrams gets the. Gets the you know he they pass the baton back to him again so now with the balls in his court maybe he makes a, he makes a good finale and I, I will say I did watch your your review video this is a while ago I remember specifically you saying um, something about something along the lines of they they treated the old characters like like props and I remember you specifically re referencing like R two and stuff and like that that stuck out to me as well I, that, that kind of bothered me that you have this iconic character like R two and he's like a prop on a ship and. Uh, when I left the theater, the one word in my mind was, it was just a weird movie. It was just really weird. The whole time you're waiting for like what you're expecting to happen to happen or like something yeah. to happen. That's going to turn this around. Like I was like waiting for the end of the movie for like this all to be like a dream. Yeah. Like yeah. for like Ray to wake up. I'm like, they're still on the Island praying yeah. with Luke. You know, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like, Oh, okay. Like, you I, know, I like, you know that, if you ever yeah. watched uh, the end of, uh, of uh, the uh, Twilight series, and where like she finds out that the whole fight at the end is just a dream, yeah. and it's not really. So I thought that uh, you know it was going to be something like that, but no. I mean, um, that's the way he decided to go with it. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I just kind of feel like uh, Luke uh, was such a um, a proactive, positive character in that original series. I mean, he he went into the Death Star. With Palpatine and Darth Vader, two of the most evil dudes in the galaxy, uh, to save his dad because he believed after all these years that his dad still had like a beam of light in him, something that he thought he could take his dad back to the light side, and he succeeded in that. And after all that, he's going to be a pessimistic guy, yeah, that's living on an island that doesn't believe that there's a chance to save the galaxy. I, I, I don't know, I, I just I don't see how. That guy became that guy. Like I, yeah. I, I that's I don't know. You know well, well, there's hope with JJ, and he's going to be back in episode nine. So we've got hope again. So we'll just go with that. We'll just close that one there. Uh, two more questions for you, Remon. All right, this next one here. After the massive success of Wedge and Biggs combo, better known as Wigs, which pair was the next to receive in-game bonuses for the other character being present? Anakin and Ahsoka. You got it, man. JKA and Snips. All right. Yep. Good stuff. Final question here. Let's see if you can get this to the right answer. It's just a fun one. Please put these in the correct order. Kira, Ayla Secura, Midriff Padme, Amalyn Hodel. Holdo. 
Oh man. Okay. Put them in the correct order. <laughs> as in like as in like 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 uh like like which way I like them? Uh, this- to do these things, we cannot talk about these things. Right now. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. If I had to put them in the correct order, I would say, um, huh. well, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Kira. I got to tell you. And what, what was the other? You said Ahsoka. We, Ta- you said we got, you said, we got, uh, we got, we got a- Aelos Kira, Midriff Padme, Kira, Holdo. Okay. Well, I'd say um, Holdo is definitely the last one. So she's number four. Um, I'd say like number three, uh, would be Ayla. And then I'd say, um, I'd say Kira and then Midriff Padme I at, uh, it. at number one. So I just, just full disclosure, I got a thing for blue twilight. So Ayla's number one there. And then uh, <laughs> I won't argue. I won't argue with you on Midriff Padme. All right. Anyways, <laughs> That's about all we got for tonight, guys. I want to thank Remon. Remon, my man, where can people find you out there? What do you tell them what you do? <laughs> well, you know, I do what we, you know, what we all try to do is, and that's make videos. Um, you know, I, I, I'm on, uh, you can find me on my channel at Ramon Azab, uh, spelled R E M O N A Z A B. And you can find me on Twitter at Ramon Azab as well. And, uh, I do, uh, you know, weekly live show with my partner, good old Maurice. And Maurice. Um, you'll also find, uh, you know, that uh, I'm going to be uh, putting together, you know, some more, you know, collaborations, hopefully with Urzatron at some point in the oh, future. Yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy. You got it, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, one last thing. I want to get a shout out to my homie, Urban Blaster. He hooked me up with a shirt. This man lives in Denver, Colorado, and he hooked me up. So uh, I want to thank Irvin for that, and uh, he's got a great channel, so you guys should definitely go check him out. He's a uh, he's a guy like me who just likes having fun with the game and uh, not taking Irvin. life too seriously. So, again, Irvin Blaster, Irvin Blaster is awesome. Yeah, he's a good, good good dude. So all right, guys, this has been Rogue Actions with Remon live from Urza's Holiday Table Hall. We hope you all have a great night. We're out of here.